the lads fixed the back of that shed the other day with that piece of wood had fell down up there and then that one had snapped so that looks good just off the bills to do some spraying just filled up with diesel the tanks run empty i don't know how we've managed to use 5,000 liters of fuel since the beginning of february because it's only what 25th today but what's really annoying is two years ago that fuel would have cost me 18 pence a litre to replace now it's probably going to cost me around a pound a litre so we've got 300 percent increase in the cost of fuel 200 percent increase to a 300 percent increase in the cost of fertilizer yeah only maybe 50 percent not even 50 percent rise in the price of what we're selling it's just freaking economics of this job are just getting worse all the time and i don't know how i'm going to order fuel today Saturday, war broke out two days ago. I'm gonna pay absolutely through the nose for it. Well, the other tank, which I thought was full, they've been using and that's empty as well. Bag it, four on, it's got a bar, so I'm just jumping up and down on it now. Splash the lungs. Bill's just putting a little bit of fertilizer on some of his rape, and then I think he's gonna put some on his barley tomorrow. I'm just going to spray this field in front of us now. In this field of oil seed right now. Can anyone guess what that red thing is? If you think you know, leave a comment below. But it's stood up in Bill's field of rape. Spraying now. This rape of Bill's has been eaten by pigeons, but there is like a big bird of prey there that's just landed whether that's been eating it. Anyway, luckily the GPS is working. We've not, no one's turned the satellites off just yet. But it, it, it could be entirely possible. Just spraying on the banks of the river now, just have to stop for someone to walk past because there's a footpath from the other side of it. The, doing the maths yesterday on the whole fertilizer and what wheat comes out of the Ukraine. Anyway, got it slightly wrong, so if 30% of the wheat comes out of the Ukraine, that means 70% doesn't. If that 70% production drops by 60, I think it means we're going to be short of, it means we'll have 28% of it. Now, this is a crucial time of year for agriculture, so we're now getting on the land, which is nice. We're going to put fertilizer on and we're sowing spring crops. I've got a diesel shortage at the moment, but that's, that's a mistake. But if you're a Ukrainian farmer, are you going to have the fuel, are you going to have the seed, and are you going to have the fertiliser to grow anything? Or are you going to want to stick around to do that? When, or are you going to want to try and get out of the way from the war zone and protect your family? It's going to be very interesting as to what is planted there. The other thing is Russia as well is a big grower of food and wheat. Can, can they still carry on their agriculture or will the sort of fuel supplies end up getting sent to the front line because them tanks are pretty thirsty. I believe that this is only the beginning because it's took eight years plus in happening. You know, it's, it's eight years ago since they the wanted the Crimea and they did that. And then um, you know, the Ukraine's like the other piece of the jigsaw, but, but where will it stop? It's going to be a very interesting few years, I think. And sadly, I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of life lost and, and a lot a lot of change. Just horrible. Hopefully you can see, but there's a few yellow flowers showing already, which is quite crazy really considering it's still February I hope it doesn't flower too soon and then we get winter biting back like it did last year what you call a full spring they do say is it March in like a lion out like a lamb well March is next week are we gonna get winter biting back and this stuff's in flower or in bud typical you go spraying and the world and his wife all decide to walk down the footpath. Just so every time I get to the end, I have to keep stopping and waiting for a while. 
I've just jumped out the spray out and went to Winnie just to look at some of the oilseed rape that's grown since they had fertiliser in the wheat. This isn't getting too badly demolished by the pigeons and it's just starting to kick off now. It's nowhere near as big as Bill's is at the moment, but there's a piece here that's starting to what we call bolt. So you've got like stem extension and you've got the buds coming on the top now. So I'm quite happy it's a little bit behind actually because I still think winter could bite back. It did last year to us. Back from spraying, part of the baiting in the shed. This is the birthday bumper. So happy birthday if your name is on there. And if it's not, happy birthday anyway. That was a short one today, wasn't it? Quick flood update subsided ever so slightly but not a lot hopefully it will go in the next few days now it's stopped raining although it has given rain for monday roundabout update i don't know if we can zoom in from here but still not finished so what will we finish first the roundabout or will the flood be gone first what do you think i've had the chalk out again because i've driven the ukraine it's a little bit crude but that is kiev but kiev we now call it because Kiev is the Russian pronunciation. So if you notice now on the news, they're calling it Kiev. So for the last sort of like four or five years, they've been trying to get people to call it Kiev rather than Kiev, because then that way then it means it's Ukrainian and not Russian. So the Russians will call it Kiev, Ukrainians call it Kiev. This is Chernobyl power plant. Now you'd have heard a lot about that, obviously, because it blew up about 30 years ago. I was lucky enough to visit it two, less than two years ago. Anyway, Putin has got his troops based here now. He's invaded it and got there. Why has he got there? This is why, I'll show you. Acres of tarmac, flat, straight roads. So if you want to build an air base or a military base, that is the perfect place. Why? Loads of reasons. Loads of concrete, flat, 100 mile exclusion zone around it where no one really lives. So if someone was to sneak up on you, you'd spot them from the air. The other thing is, is there's this invisible blanket, the fact that if you park a load of military hardware or troops in the shadow, of nuclear reactors no one in the world dare send a missile in if you've got all your stuff in the middle of nowhere and someone sends a rocket blows all your planes up blows your runway up then they've took you out but no one dare fire anything near them because if they miss nuclear disaster if it's a big bomb nuclear disaster it's just such a sensitive area that they are basically protected by the shadow of, of what's around them. Also, there's lots of good infrastructure there. They built the biggest building in the world on wheels there to go over the old reactor that blew up. That's weighs something like 300,000 tonnes or something. So that is why there's a lot of tarmac, a lot of concrete, and a lot of infrastructure heading to it. Also, you've got damn near straight road, 80 miles straight into Kiev. So that is there. They're not there to, to nick the plutonium or the uranium and all stuff like that. They're there because it's a safe place for them. And it's just off the border for Belarus. So straight in, like I say, you can see for miles if anyone's coming. We've got a big river that leads to Kiev and also good road access. So that is why they're there. Which to be fair is a stroke of genius by the Russian army. And really, the Ukrainians should have thought about this when it was all kicking off. They should have got some reinforcements there. A few people got this right. It is in fact a kiln. So you put glass in it or other things and then you set the timer and you turn it on and it melts stuff. So my sister used to be into, um, it's got some mole valley receipts in it. My sister used to be into making stuff out of glass and it, it melts it all together. Anyway, my uncle's gonna have a go at making something out of it. So I'll uh, we'll see how it goes and I'll show you some pictures when he does. Just looking, it gets up to 870 degrees. Pretty hot, that. The cat needs to have antibiotics. So Charlotte has left me some notes to remind me. So there's one here, one here. One on the fridge, and another one on the other door. How could I possibly forget? So we obviously dynamited the MB track the other day, and we we're a little bit disappointed that it was a bit down on power to what we thought. We thought it'd be well over sort of 100 horse. I think it's about 105. I thought it'd be getting near 150. But if you remember, when I took it around the block when we first got it, it it was struggling and it blocked the fuel strainer, the filter thing. Anyway, we've never serviced it yet because we've not had time. We need to get it and do it. But look, look at that. It's quite black inside, so it is a bit choked. So I think a good service and a good and a new air filter. I think it probably will be more horsepower than it did on the dynamite the other day. So that is something that we'll get around to doing when we get a chance.
that is all for today if you want to watch another video you can click up here if you want to click if you want to subscribe you can click over there i have not done that for ages someone reminded me yesterday on instagram so thanks for watching and i will see you all tomorrow and if you've made it this far give it a thumbs up and a like see you tomorrow